navigate to OMIPV administration console, provide the password that was set up during the deployment, click login. In the vCenter registration page, click on register new vCenter server, provide the vCenter host name or IP address, provide an optional description and a administration log a login that has pro appropriate access on the vCenter server. Optionally, you can register this OMIVV appliance with the vSphere Lifecycle Manager, which I would not do here. Click Register. The OMIVV appliance will now go and register itself with the vCenter server. And the v OMI VV appliance has successfully registered itself with our vCenter server. You can see the vCenter server details in this view. Coming to our vCenter server, ensure that you have refreshed the page. Once you do that, navigate to the home shortcuts and you should now see two new options for the Open Manage Integration page on your shortcuts menu. Navigating to the screen will take you to the dashboard. We are logging on to this appliance for the first time after the OMIVV appliance registration. We are greeted with the initial configuration visit. Let's get started. Select our vCenter server. Provide the initial details about host credentials. These details include things like access to iDRAC, user ID and password and access to VMware ESXi user ID and password. Provide the profile some meaningful name and an optional description. Provide iDRAC credentials. If your environment is registered with Active Directory, you may tick to do and provide those details. Provide the host details, which is the VMware login. Provide the VMware ESXi host credentials. Again, if you require, provide the Active Directory details. Select the host within your vCenter environment that these profiles will be associated with. You can begin the test and say both of those details pass successfully. Finish next. Proceed to the next steps, which is providing details about inventory of your environment. Provide an appropriate time when this inventory details retrieval would happen. Normally that happens once a week by default on Sunday 3 a.m. I'll leave it to default provide the information about when the warranty data would be retrieved from the Dell website. I will enable that and change it to 4 a.m. on a Sunday. Optionally, you can check the events, what level of event alerting would happen from your OMIVV to your vCenter server. I will leave things to default and move to next and click finish. So now we have registered our OMIVV appliance with the vCenter server, performed the initial configuration. Now let's see what goodness this brings to our vCenter server. If you navigate to our host and cluster and click on individual hosts, we can see the OMIVV host information displayed right on our fingertips. We can see the service tag as well as the all the identification details in relation to the individual host. We have a quick glance on the hypervisor firmware versions, BIOS and iTrack, as well as a quick shortcut to the iTrack console for this particular host. We can even do the tasks like blinking the server LED if we need to identify it within a whole rack and perform a firmware wizard upgrade or a system lockdown on the iTrack level. This is not the hypervisor level. 
On our cluster level, we have vSphere HA and vSphere DRS both enabled before we can begin the deployment of firmware using the OMIVV tasks. If we right click our cluster, we have a new option of performing the OMIVV cluster actions, including the firmware update. We are now greeted with firmware update checklist, which essentially requires us to perform some tasks before the firmware updates can be deployed using the vCenter integration. I have already carried out all these tasks, so I'm ready to get started. Update source. In this screen, you have to choose the repository where the firmwares would be residing. You have the option of using the Dell default catalog, which requires internet connectivity to go to Dell catalog and pull out all the latest firmware available on Dell website. Optionally, you can use local Dell repository manager based repository, which is essentially a copy of Dell's firmware and BIOS within your own data center. In my example, I will choose the Dell default catalog. In the bundles, you will see the bundles available for the exact host available within your cluster. I have an R740, so I will use the default bundle available on Dell website and proceed next. Select host and firmware component screen shows all the updates available on this chosen repository for your given server. You can choose to remove any, any or all of the columns for this screen based on your requirement. You can filter them based on criticality or individual components. Let's choose the iDRAC update for this environment for my environment the current version is 3.0.1 and the latest available on Dell website is 3.5.1 obviously I can export this to a CSV file for our future references click next provide job a meaningful name any special descriptions in the additional settings you should provide a maintenance mode timeout window. Essentially, this is the time after which the update job, if it's stuck, will be canceled and the server will be rebooted and put back into service by OMIVV. This is to prevent any stuck updates, keeping your servers out of service for indefinite period. Another recommended task to perform during an update is to delete the job queue and reset the iDRAC. This will again ensure your iDRAC has applied all the firmwares and there are no stuck jobs that can prevent smooth functioning. On the update schedule window, you can choose a schedule when this change can be applied. In my case, I will just do it now and click next. Review the details in the window here and click finish. OMIVV will now go ahead and schedule this using your vCenter server on your high drag. We can view these details within the recent jobs in our vCenter console. We can now see the files being staged onto the iDRAC itself. We are now on the iDRAC console of the server being updated. If we navigate to maintenance and filter the job queue based on the updates log type we should now be able to see the update being finally delivered to the server 